There you go. Hello and welcome to the physics lab once again. Here we're going to do lab seven, the Earth's magnetic field. Now in this video we're just going to talk about the laboratory setup and I can talk anything about the theory. So what we have here is we have our power supply, a tangential galvanometer, a multimeter, one of these guys here, a dip needle. For some reason the dip needle always points at PK whenever he's in the lab. I don't know why. And a bunch of wires. Okay? We're not using any logger pro or anything. The wiring goes from the power supply over to the left side of the galvanometer and then we take the, the signal off of the right side so we'll go from negative to the to the left and then over here that means that 5 and 10 that means that we're going to take into account all 15 coils of the galvanometer and we're going to go from here over to the connection block here and then we're going to run another another line from the plus to the connector block over here we'll put the multimeter in series because we're measuring current with the circuit. So now the multimeter itself, we have it set up so we got black on COM and red on the unfused 20 amp max input. And we've got the multimeter set right now to 20 amps right there. So we're good. We're all ready. Now what we have to do first is you have to line up the um, galvanometer with the Earth's magnetic field. And there's two things that you have to do. First you have to rotate the galvanometer so that the arrow on the inside points directly along the, in the same direction as the galvanometer. Or you could look at it as the, the, thin, air, the thin lines are pointing directly perpendicular. All right, and I think that's about right, right there. Now what you have to do is you have to rotate the angle part of it here so that that's set up so the, that the arrow points at zero. Alternately, you can look at the thin lines and have them set up at 90, plus or minus 90. That's probably a lot easier, too. Okay, so now this is lined up with the Earth's magnetic field. Now, as you might know here, we're, I'm sitting here in the lab, and 101 north goes that way. So we're pretty close, it's a little bit off, but then again, 101 isn't straight, and as you'll find out, the Earth's magnetic field doesn't point directly north anyway. Close enough though. So we're ready to take data. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn our power supply on and adjust it until we get to exactly a half an amp on the multimeter. Now, as you notice here, the galvanometer is going crazy. It takes a little while to settle out. But what we're going to do is we're going to measure the angle difference that it, we see. And we wait for it to come out. The nice part about this is we can just read it directly. We wait. Now, actually we can't read it quite directly because the thing is what happened is it actually shifted over to about 70 degrees or so. Again, it's easier to read the thin, the thin line and then subtract that from 90 degrees. And Greg, you just hit the, uh, you're hitting this. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't hire good help. You know what I can, what can I say? <laughs> We gotta wait for it to settle out again. It's almost settled out. <laughs> so anyway, what we're gonna do here is let's just say it looks like it's gonna come out to 18 degrees on the thin line. So 90 minus 18 is 72. So we type into our spreadsheet, our angle is 72. All right. And then what we do is we change the current to 0.75 amps oh how about that and we measured again and now instead of 18 degrees it's actually reading 14 or 90 minus 14 would be 76 whoops so we have 70 Six. 72 is the first one. And then we increase it to one amp. All right. And we measure it again. And now it says it's at 10 degrees. 
90 minus 10 would be 80. All right, so now we have to calculate our induced magnetic field. This is the magnetic field that's generated by the galvanometer. Now be careful not to move this, so even though we're, we're, I think we're done with it, but just leave it there. Yeah. Now the formula, it's in your book, it's B is equal to mu zero, N, which is 15, I, which is your current, let's turn it off, divided by the radius. Well, how do we figure out the radius? Well, we use this. Now what we have set up here is this is like our vernier calipers that we've used in the past. Uh, and we have this set up here at 10. This is just a bigger version of it. And we measure it across here. I am going to take these cables off here. Now try to, you can take the cables off, but try not to, you want to make it bigger. It's going to be, and what you do is you put it in this slot right there. And then you measure it. Now it says it's at 31. But we subtract the 10, and that means it's going to be a diameter of 21. We don't want the diameter. We want the radius. So we divide that in half, 10 and a half centimeters. But we don't want the radius in centimeters. We want it in meters. So it's going to be 0 0.105. So we write in our data sheet. First of all, we put point Two one for the diameter and 0.105. Now I might change this sheet around a little bit by the time we get to class. <coughs> yeah. All right. So now we can calculate our bi. That's just a straight application of the formula. Easy, right? We can also figure out the Earth's magnetic field. Why? Because if you look at this diagram you have in your uh, lab manual. We have a, a triangle here. We have BI, which is the one we just calculated. We have BE being perpendicular to it because we set it up that way. And we have this angle, theta. Theta is the angle that we just measured too. So what we can do is we know, we know that the tangent of theta is going to be BI over BE. So you know that BE is equal to BI divided by the tangent of theta. Now you might want to watch that over a little bit just to make sure you understand that. So you can figure out you can calculate all your BEs. All right. So we have three BEs, and then you take the average of those. OK. Now, the next part is to find the inclination. Now, it says stuff in the lab manual about finding the declination, but I'm going to show you how we're just going to skip that part for now. OK? Because the declination is really from true north, and we don't really know what true north is right here. But we can figure out the inclination. So what we do is we take our dip needle, and it's going to be pretty much parallel to the galvanometer. That's why I wanted you to leave it in place. And you put it down flat like this, and you wait for it to settle out. It's going to take a while to settle out, and you might be able to just... You also want to make sure that it's nice and level. This way. It should be. It doesn't have to be exactly level. but. Especially this way, it helps. Okay. Now it should be pointing at 270 degrees, which is what it's pointing at. So now the needle is, is this whole thing is lined up directly north. Now what we're going to find out is what that's the the uh, so now we have to find the inclination. So what we do is we rotate this 90 degrees. Level it. Like I said, it doesn't have to be exact, but that's pretty far off right there. There we go. Wait for it to calm down. I know where it's headed. So. And now what we're interested in is the angle here that goes from 270, in this case, down to, oh, it looks like 300 and... 37 or 340. Pretend we'll just wait till it for it to sell. Let's say it's 65 degrees. So now what we do is we type in our inclination, 65 degrees. And now we have to break up the Earth's magnetic field into the vertical and horizontal component. Now, if you look at this 
the, the dip meter, the dip needle right here, you can see that it's actually pointing pretty much straight down, or not quite straight down, but that's 65 degrees down. So most of the Earth's magnetic field in Santa Rosa is actually going straight into the ground. Okay, we can figure that out just with a little bit of trigonometry, right? Because it's going to be that the horizontal component is going to be equal to the BE, which we figured out in the first part, times the cosine of 65 degrees. Okay? And the vertical part of the Earth's magnetic field is going to be BE times the sine of 65 degrees. All right, so that's great. Now, what does all this mean? Well, we want to compare it to the NOAA values, which I'll send you a link as to where we can find those. Okay? And that will tell us how accurate our measurements are. All right, now why is the Earth's magnetic field, by the way, pointing directly into the ground? Well, what that means is this is the direction to true magnetic north. It's right through the ground, and Earth's mag Earth, the magnetic uh, north pole of the Earth is in Greenland. So what this is saying is Greenland is that way. So if you want to take a shortcut to Greenland, that's the direction you should go. Now, the password for today's lab is Greenland. All right, so is, then I guess I'll see you in the physics lab.